Anything you want to add, Mom? No. Is there anything you want to say about the neighborhood? I really do do three cans sometimes, so it's fine. Okay. So yeah, we love we we love the neighborhood and you know we were talking earlier about some of the challenges and occasional frustrations of living close to campus but you know what if we live somewhere else it'd be something else you know it's like that's life in the city I mean mm -hmm. I think if you're gonna live around other people you're gonna have there's gonna be some issues just because and it happens to be generally focused around students here, but there's no guarantee that if you live someplace That's true, that see, and here's the pine tree. Ooh. They're, I think they're very cool looking when they're little, but <laughs> they, they still have to be killed <laughs> <laughs> because it would not be good to have them all grow up here. Um. Yeah, so I've been, been here now for probably um, almost three years, I'd say. Um, but like I said, Jessica was here probably for five plus years uh, earlier. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, this, this is a great neighborhood for, I mean, when Jessica f first got the house, um, she was working um, with an organization called Uni University United, and they um, were working on the University Avenue corridor, um, working to help encourage redevelopment and mm -hmm. get it ready for, for transit improvements and um, help to advocate to, to make those things happen. The work is all about discouraging single occupancy motor vehicle trips and encouraging other types of trips like carpooling, biking, walking, mm -hmm. using transit. And mostly, historically, they would concentrate on commuting trips, like the trips to and from work, but that's only about a quarter of the trips that people take. So um, she really also expanded the, the organization to look beyond the, just the, the work commuting trips and to become more of a holistic thing. Mm -hmm. um, and another big change um, is uh, on Charles Avenue, just a, a couple of blocks south of where I live. It was a, an organization called uh, the Friendly Streets Initiative who worked on um, getting the people through in Midway and, and Frogtown organized into envisioning ways that they could make the neighborhood streets um, nicer, um, better places to, to bike on and to, to walk on and to live on. Um, and less, less, less fast cars um, on the streets. The, the video, the film job I, yeah. I, I'm doing this year, um, it, it is uh, with the, the Friendly Streets Initiative, actually, okay. um, which I mentioned before that, that helped with the Charles Avenue project. Um, they're, uh, they're working on a Better Bridges project this year, mm -hmm. um, which is about improving all of the, the crossings over the freeway that cuts through the neighborhood. Um, and so they, they hired, they got a grant and hired me um, to make a movie um, that's telling their, their story of how they, how they work with communities to, to, to change the physical design of, of the streets and making them nicer um, in, the, in the neighborhood. And um, so I'm going to be working on that throughout this whole this whole year with them, um, and uh, and the idea is that um, it can help them share 
um, their methods, their methodology, um, how they do things with other communities um, in, in Minnesota and, and across the rest of the United States. <laughs> I'd say this part of Frogtown feels more like Hamlin Midway. I think orients much more to Hamlin Midway than as you go further east, which orients more towards like the capital neighborhoods and even the, mm -hmm. nor the north end. Um, and so a lot of the houses around here are really active with the Hamlin Midway groups and you know depending on what kind of definition you're looking at this neighborhood this kind of western suburb of Frogtown is also considered East Midway so there's West Midway and there's East Midway that goes up to Dale. But it's never disintegrated into name calling or trolling or you know and, and, and there's personalities that might be difficult mm -hmm. at times but you know, they're they're a part of the community. You know, just like <laughs> you might have a family. Uh, you know, we we keep it together. So yeah, so here's the community garden. This was actually started by our neighbor, our neighbor's former husband, and he and some partners started an initiative for farming and in, in Frogtown and I think on the east side. In, yeah, so it, and, and so um, in return for doing kind of the basic maintenance on these empty lots, so they they got the, the rights from the property owners to do these community gardens and although with the, the family community gardens what they're growing is a lot more diverse than stone's throw which is a, a commercial venture but by doing this they're able to farm a number of urban acres and minimize just the transit time for produce mm -hmm. in Frogtown, um, which is just Dale and University, and no one's ever gone to college in my family. Like, everyone's really working class, so if they had, like, a union job, then they were homeowners and had health insurance. So I went to Hamlin because it was close enough, and this sounds really silly, but it was far enough because a lot of people just catch the bus in my family, so it was just far enough away from Frogtown where some of, like, the neighborhood family drama would be a part of my life which like if you think about transportation it's two miles that doesn't seem far but when people don't drive it was far enough because they would have to catch the bus but I really love the Hamlin Midway because it, it is like a very I got to know a lot of people and I worked at the rec center which turns into kind of the center of the community for families we have a Friday night group that was been around for 15 years that's for lgbtq students where students from across the state wisconsin amount of just crazy places come to be around other lgbt teens because they don't have safe space for them so i think the friday night so even when i lived in different parts um i still always worked the friday night group even if i worked at different rec centers um this is my favorite rec center it's my favorite community to work in and I live just a couple blocks away. Um, but yeah, so then I worked at the rec center and then I worked here. Uh, so the summer before my senior year of high school, I didn't work. But then senior year of high school, I started working at this rec center till I was 21. Youth work is what I feel is like my trade. Like I think I'm a damn good youth worker and I have a lot of families and programs that like back that up. I also was pretty good. I had really high numbers and labor organizing so like I organize people don't ask me where my keys are my cell phone my car's a mess my bedroom's a mess but like I organize people to like collective action 
I don't organize things. So I struggle with like making sure we have all the cups for the community gathering. I'm like last minute looking for cups. But when it comes to like getting people together to fight collectively, um, I'm pretty good at that. And that's why I like this work because young people are the solution. They're not the problem. And it's just like our country and our communities, people are losing a lot of rights, women, <laughs> workers, immigrants. So if we're going to change anything that's happening in our country, we have to empower young people to have community organizing skills. And not like Obama was a community organizer, so now everybody has that title. Like actually doing direct action organizing where the people who are suffering have the answers, have the resources, generally donate their own money. We can't accept money from the rich and then expect to fight against them. So it's like working class people coming together, workers coming together and making change in our country. So that's the work I do as a youth worker. I'm the vice president of the local, and then I try to do as many like community things as I can outside of those two main roles. So then, in this room, can I have the key worn? Is it magic key? <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, oh, this is really exciting. This is my youth group. So I coordinate the St. Paul Youth Commission, and we are doing the first ever for youth, by youth, human trafficking. Minnesota has a pretty, like, up there compared to other states, human trafficking uh, issue. So um, the young people designed this awesome power fist, and we're doing this on Saturday. We only had 20 people registered nine days ago. And I was like, community organizing 101, how do you do turnout for an event? The answer is not posters and Facebook. That actually is, does not help at all. We did relationships. And now when we, I shut down registration yesterday, we had 115. So by actually doing strategic turnout, you make a plan, you work your plan. That's how... I think all organizing is done properly. We turned out 90 more people, so we'll see. You know, I'm part of something. There's somebody that knows I'm here, and and it's it's important. It's it's the human condition. Right. And, and you need more people than you need because, yes. like I think, for a lot of things, we would be your first call if you mm -hmm. needed something. But we're not here 100% of the no, time. No, you weren't here when I had the bat in my house. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> For instance. For instance. <laughs> and in that case, I went out my door, and my neighbors in the in the rental house next door, they were having kind of a party. And I stood in my front yard, and I said, I've got a bat in my house. And boy, I had people right then. They were just they were just all over going to help me, you know, and, and looking around the house. And we never did find the bat, but but uh, but I got a couple of cards. People gave me their cards and said, "You call me if you see the bat." Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, and and that felt really good. And that was that was my main introduction to these people that live there now. She oh she's the lady with the bat <laughs> in her belfry actually. <laughs> she's the batty lady next door. You know I've lived in a lot of neighborhoods that. I know the people that I know, but I don't get to know anybody else. And um, and even though you know, there's there's rentals. There's there's a lot of rentals around here, and you typically don't expect to have a relationship with those people. Um, those people, those people <laughs> who rent. <laughs> but they're students, and they're there for you know a little bit of time. But I live next to a. a, a three a triplex now and I just love every one of those people in that house it's and it's fun and and so they're there you know for a couple of years now and then bye then we get another bunch and I have I've had no trouble at all with living there it's actually kind of fun you know and and actually now I've met several students and it's great you know, it's great. I, I participated in a short discussion that was over at um, Ginkgo. And there it was um, two students and two neighbors. My friend Betty was there. 
and and I I met I I knew the one student, but the other student I didn't know at all, and it turned into just a lovely little afternoon kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. and and that was fun, you know, for a Sunday afternoon, it was it was great, you know, and. Um, and then, you know, I don't get to see Betty, my friend Betty, very much, so I've seen her more in relationship to this, <laughs> this class. <laughs> and, and that's fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Betty signed up. Oh, good. Who else signed up? Who am I going to see? Yeah. So when do you have to have this project turned in?